My name is Michael Smith, I'm 27 years old and I'm representing Ireland at the CrossFit Games. I suppose the most clever answer to that is there is no typical day. And that's because of the games training. You know, previous to games training, you know, Mickey would have done the majority of his work based on core CrossFit movements that we know are going to happen in the gym. You know, so we know there's going to be thrusters, we know there's going to be an element of pull-ups, we know all that stuff, and that's a known variable. We don't know what way they're going to come out, but we know that it's in a gym, and we're limited to that. However, since it, since he qualified, and you know, when he got that ticket, straight away the training shifts. So based on previous CrossFit games, and that's all we really have to go on is that data. You know, we've got to train him outside a lot, so he's got to get better at running. He's got to be better at running for longer distances. He's on a bike, he's swimming in lakes. Last weekend he did a triathlon. Um, he's doing a lot more strongman and odd object moving. So there, you know, the actual answer to that is there is no typical day now. And it's my job to make sure that we're touching all the bases, and then it's his job to execute and make sure that the stuff that he's not good at, he's getting comfortable with. I would say the, the increase in volume is definitely hard now in the training, you know, it's a lot different than the Open where you're focusing in on trying to apply as much intensity into one single session a week, okay, and then recovering to come back around and hit another week is just as hard as the, of, as the first one, but now it's more so about how much volume can you get into your day, how, how much can you can re recover from that to be able to maintain that over the space of um, weeks at a, at, at a time before you're, you're pulling back and recovering for maybe a, a back off week, so to speak. So what's happening now is it's, we're doing a lot more stuff outdoors. So we're biking, we're swimming outdoors, running a lot. We're doing a lot of strongman type stuff now as well. So odd objects, you know, stuff that you wouldn't usually do in your normal CrossFit style training, okay? Um, and then obviously there's the, the real CrossFit style workouts where there is heavy barbells and high skill gymnastics. That's the stuff that I am fairly confident that I can do well at anyway. I would move a heavy barbell well, I can do all the gymnastics, um, walk on my hands, walk over the ramp and so on. But you'd need to be ready for them things that, that can be thrown at you outside the box. Um, my name's Emmett Murda, 27. I'm Mickey's business partner, uh, best friend, training partner. Those three, yeah. I've known Mickey from he was about six months old. <laughs> and we've known each other from we were about five. <laughs> I wouldn't say there's been any difficulties really at all. We, we work well together. Um, <clears throat> we've a great family around us, great members, great friends, and really great coaches that we have to rely on for our classes and stuff as well. So it hasn't really been a struggle, I wouldn't say. We've been together three years now, so we have. Um, and actually I was Michael's manager when we first met each other. We both had a part-time job in Belfast while we were at uh, university and um, yeah, we only worked together for a very short time and then I went on to obviously do my nursing. Um, so yeah, we were friends for a couple of years beforehand. I had been then away travelling and then when we come home again we just started talking and kind of just went from there. Jenny's the same, you know, if, if, if you're absolutely starving coming into the door and uh, you'd send a wee text a half an hour early, Jenny has the spuds on, you know, so 
You can't, you can't beat it, you know. Have you had to take on some of Mickey's hours in the, in the training or take some of his personal training plans? Has there been anything like that? Or? No, the, well, the only time really would be when he goes on holidays six times a year. <laughs> I would mean, look after the classes that way. Nah, I'm only joking. Um, well, no, it would be, he would do is just as, as much as me. So he would, if not, probably more. <laughs> to be honest with you, he does work hard. He, uh, he's in the gym every morning from quarter past six to nine o'clock every evening. And putting training on top of that, trying to eat. Maybe getting an odd 40 minute nap during the day. <coughs> well, he would get maybe two or three, but uh, nah, it's, it's, it's long hours. Like it's, it's hard work, it really is. His answer might be a bit different to mine in regards to how hard he works. I hear every day how he works so hard. Um, but no, Aki really does. And there's a lot that goes on in behind um, the gym as well, like the programming of things, you know, making sure that there's enough equipment here for the amount of classes that are coming in, making sure all like the new people that are signing up are onto whatever system that you know they need to be. There's a lot of like sort of admin stuff that goes on in the background that I think a lot of people forget sometimes, you know, just coming through these doors thinking, oh, they take a class and that's kind of it. So that at the weekends, you know, would take up a lot of time especially on a Sunday sitting down and getting ready for like the week ahead um, but yeah he does he obviously works hard because there's the classes on board there's him doing his own training there's as I say him and Emmett sitting down to plan new classes or new you know adventures that they're going to do together um, so yeah he, look, he does work very hard but for me it's more kind of the mental side of things for him and how taxing that can be because yes okay he can be physically tired from getting up early late nights training for four hours maybe in a day but it's watching how that actually affects him sometimes in his own head and making sure that he gets the right food on board getting the right sleep and everything that to me is what I can actually help him with or try to help him with. Here we are at Camacha. What's the, what's the food in here? Oh nice. You've got burrito bowls Special of the day. <laughs> oh, I like the burrito ball. All the good shit. So far, it's going pretty well. Um, the, the hardest part for, I think, a coach again is the fact that you're coaching someone for something you don't know that's not going to happen. You know, that's, that's, that's pretty difficult to formulate a, a program. And then, as well, you want to give them enough training so that they can go there and compete and legitimately have a good time and a good experience and not be put out in the first day. And at the same time, you want to back off the training because you don't want them overtrained. You want to avoid niggles and injuries and stuff like that. So, you know, adjusting the volume and what they can tolerate is a big thing. And listening to the athlete and them telling you how they're feeling is a big thing around that. Um, but, but so far, it's been a good process. I mean, I would say training for the Open was a lot more stressful because it's a much more known quantity. And, you know, we know the competitors in this country and we knew how good the competitors are, you know, that Mickey had to go out there and beat. Um, so it was much more stressful during the Open, and you know that's when I developed a, a relationship with you know Jenny, uh, you know his girlfriend, who was able to like help me out in the background whenever Mickey was having a bad day and stuff like that. So yeah, I would say the game of training has been pretty fun and hasn't been that challenging. Um, the Open was much more difficult. I think a lot of people look at Michael, and he'll probably kill me for saying this, but they look at him, see muscle, see stature, and just think, you know, oh, he's a guy can take on anything. Like a lot of people do, looking at young guys these days, he has his own business, he has a house, he has a car, girlfriend, dog, whatever else. It looks like, yeah, everything is just there, and he can cope with this all. But Michael is actually a very soft person on the inside that a lot of people wouldn't realise, and things can get to him like any other human out there. Um, and definitely, like before 19.5, um, because there was obviously that live announcement, there was a lot of extra pressure there. It's something that he wants so bad. It's something that he has worked so hard for, so hard for, and he's his own worst enemy as well. You know, you know, we're probably all the same with that extra pressure. So that was very hard to see him putting himself through that, but having to actually just give him nothing but tough love at that time. You wanted to sit down and hug him and tell him, look, I know there's going to be a lot of eyes on you. I know there's going to be cameras, there's going to be pressure. You know, no one puts pressure on him like himself. Um, but it was a case of, and Neil, his coach, was obviously very good at that time, helping me and texting me in the sideline that Michael obviously didn't know about, you know, saying, try to do this, try to do that. You know, just ways of, as you say, getting him out of the house, distracting him, bringing him to his favourite restaurant, you know, going for pizza, things like that, just to make him think, you know, of something else other than 19.5 at that time. Like that, the morning that he woke up beforehand, he was just like, I can't move, I can't. You know, it, it had just completely consumed him, like, but he done well, he done really well. No, no, I'm fairly, fairly relaxed whenever it comes to training because, uh, and, and competitions, you can't, 
take everything too serious because whenever you start getting serious or in any way sort of negative towards workouts that don't go your way, I find the whole, the whole system starts to break down, stress levels start going up. So try your I always try my best to have a bit of crack. Um, if, if you miss a lift or if uh, a session doesn't go too well, just move on to the next thing so, and, and don't dwell on it too much. So I try to do that in competition as well. The, the only real focus then is executing. So whenever it comes to competitions, I've had fairly good success in the past year or two with competitions. And I think that's, it's not that I'm better than anyone else or more talented. It's more so when it comes down to execution, you really dial all the focus into executing every workout. Relaxed to the point where I'm, I'm sort of dwindling off the, the pints at the weekend now. Now I'm only joking. I don't, I don't drink half as much as I used to now. Um, I would have loved an old pint at the weekend or an old pint of stout, you know. Um, but I'm trying to keep keep good now, leading up to the games. I did it for the open. I went off the drink for six weeks, which which is a long time for a man around these parts. <laughs> and I'm trying to do the same now, coming up to the games. So yeah, it's going okay. It's going yeah. okay. Like just everyone coming together for him and being there for him and just or like I know everyone says with CrossFit there is such a sense of community but there really has been like even everyone coming down to our house or coming to the gym and congratulating him and just watching him be re like just totally being able to enjoy that as well. I really really love that. He's the worst uh, looking toes I've ever seen. His toes on him like claws. <laughs> it's a good feeling just to see the athlete achieve the thing that they set out to achieve. You know, so whether it's RX team, team, you know, scale, whatever competition it is, you know, if, if you're an athlete or, or a person that sets out a specific goal and then puts in all the graft and the hard work to get there and get that, it's kind of the same feeling for me. It's like, you know, that's that's well done, that's a pat on the back, you've done well. <laughs> he always has them well hidden most of the time. <laughs> Oh definitely, you have to do it for the crowds, like you have to do it for the people. Try and put on a bit of a show, yeah, yeah, I'll definitely do my best. You just never know, you just never never know, huh? We'll see. I know there's a there's a knockout stage uh, happening that there's no precise um, amount of numbers who's gonna be knocked out, but I'm, the plan is to definitely make it past the first two days if possible. Watch this. 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 Watch this.